Hi guys, uh, Terry here again. Um, so this is question uh, four. Yeah, question four of the January 2020 paper. All right, uh, question four, they give us a function here. And the function is two x plus seven um, divided by five. And they want f of four plus f of minus four. So first thing we need to do, we need to find f of four. So that's going to be 2 multiplied by 4 plus 7 over 5. So that's 4 to the 8 plus 7 over 5. 7, 7, 14, and 1, 15. So that's 15 over 5. And that's going to give me 3. Next thing we need to work out is f of minus 4. f of minus 4 is going to be 2 multiplied by minus 4 plus 7, right? All over 5. So this here is going to be minus 8 plus 7 over 5. Minus 8 plus 7 is minus 1. So this is minus 1 over 5. So if you want to work out uh, f of 4 plus f of minus 4, then all we're going to do, we're going to say 3 plus minus 1 fifth, right? And that should give me what? 2 and 4 fifths, right? Or 14 over 5, right? All right, so that is a part one. Next part, they want us to calculate the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. Now, this is what they gave us as f of x. They said f of x is 2x plus 7 over 5. Right? And they want us to find... Um, well, let me just shift something here. Right. First thing they want, they want us to um, calculate the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. So all we need to do for this part here is actually just put x plus 7 over 5 is equal to 9, right? When we cross multiply, we're going to get 2x plus 7 is equal to 9 by 5, which is 45. So therefore, 2x is equal to 45 minus 7. So 2x is equal to um, 45 minus 7. That's going to give me 38. And therefore, x is equal to 38 over 2. So therefore, x is equal to 19, right? So that's my answer for, because they said the value of x, right? That's what they're looking for there. And in part B, hence or otherwise, determine the value of f inverse of 9. Now, what's something here? When you have a value of x and you plug that into a function, right? You're going to get a value that's going to come out here, right? Now, in this case here, when I plug um, 19 into this function, I am getting 9 coming out here. Now, the question is asking me for, right? I'm going to need reverse direction now. So, what they want, they want this. But you know that when you are in the reverse direction, we, are, we actually have what we call the inverse function here, right? So, this is what we know based on the simple diagram here, right? f of 19 is going to give me um, 9. Now, if I take that 9 and I plug it into the inverse, so f inverse of 9, I should get 19, right? So they said hence or otherwise. So you didn't have to go and work out the inverse. You can deduce what the answer should be, right? So f of 9 should be 19. That's it. The next part here, um, they gave us two lines, L1 and L2. Right, and they gave us some intercepts, right? So they gave us some intercepts here. And what do they want? Determine the equation of L1, right? So where is L1? L1 is this line here. So you already know what the y-intercept is, right? So you know what c is. C is 2. So we need to find the gradient of this line here. So what I'm going to use to find my gradient, I'm going to use 0, 2 as a point. And I want to use this point here as a point as well. This is 4, 0, right? So let's work out the equation of this line. So we have um, two points, which will be 0, 2, and 4, 0, right? And we want to find the gradient. We need the gradient first, 
right? So the gradient M is given by Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And we need to label our points. So X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And we're going to substitute now. So Y2 in this case is 0. So it's 0 minus 2 over um, 4 minus 0. So that's minus 2 over 4, which is actually minus a half. So that's my gradient of my line L1. And you already know the y-intercept. The y-intercept was this figure here. So the equation of L1, right, is y is equal to minus a half x plus 2, right? Just remember that all equations of lines follow this format, mx plus c. y is equal to mx plus c. So that's the equation of L1. Now, they said, what is the gradient of L2 given that L1 and L2 are perpendicular? So when they say these lines are perpendicular, it means that they cut at 90 degrees. There's a relationship between um, two lines that are perpendicular. When I multiply the gradients, I should get minus 1. Right? So um, the gradient right, of L1 multiplied by the gradient of L2 should be equal to minus 1. That's for all perpendicular lines, right? Now you know what L1 is. L1 is minus a half, right? So therefore the gradient of L2. So what I normally tell students, so we know that L1 is minus a half, right? So I usually tell my students invert. So it's going to be 2 over 1, right? And then we have to put a minus sign in front of it. So when I work this out here, I'm going to get my gradient of L2 being 2, right? So we can do a quick check. The gradient of L1 is minus a half. And if I multiply that by 2 over 1, this will cancel with this and I will get minus 1. So therefore, I am certain that this answer is correct, right? That's my gradient of my um, L2, right? Right? So this is question four, right? Please hit like and subscribe, right?